practice today? No, neither one. No. Uh, with with Yan. Oh, no. 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 Good memory. Uh, I thought, uh, yeah, I was surprised. Yeah. But you okay. didn't ask that. Very disappointed. Yeah. Um, and he had said, actually, after the Orlando game, like, he kind of, I mean, you had said you didn't like the way he moved. And yeah. He had said he kind of, is that just one of those things of, of being. Yeah, we've done all the, um, you know, imaging and all that stuff, so he's good. Uh, I can tell you that. Um, but we just have to, we, we feel like, and so our doctors, let's give him a little more rest. Uh, he's still doing conditioning and things like that. Uh, but we went live a lot today, and we just didn't want him out there uh, doing any of that, or any of our guys, for that matter. I think it's that as Achilles is growing, we just want to make sure everything, we want him to be as close to 100% as possible if you can be that at this point. Um, I guess regarding Giannis' progress and things, I mean, where, where? He's doing well. I mean, he's, he's you know, walking around and looks good. Um, he's, I can say, farther than we thought he would be, uh, but just not ready yet. Yeah, I'm still hopeful, but I just I have no idea right now. Do you expect him to practice at all this week? I don't know. I don't know. I mean, obviously, I don't know if him or Dame will practice this week, but I'm not sure either way. Dame could play without practicing. Yeah, they all can play. Yeah, which I would do. <laughs> uh, I mean, there's just been some reporting out there about the doubt that you guys will start the series with Giannis. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I'm just going to wait and see. I'm not going to make a decision. Uh, first of all, I don't make the decision. Uh, but our, our medical team is saying they don't know, so I'm going to wait and see. Is it potentially possible that he will not play, or do you expect, as I say, an entire series, but at some point? No, I mean, I literally don't know one way or the other. I mean, he could play in game one, um, and he could not play. You know, so I, I literally – I listen – I'm a spectator on this one as you. The only difference is I'll get the news before you guys. You know, that's basically it. Yeah. Um, so going live without two starters. Yeah, that was not the best plan, uh, obviously. You know, but again, as we've been saying, it is what it is. Um, we did get to work on a lot of stuff, um, you know, with Chris, getting him comfortable uh, with some of the things we feel like they're going to do on defense and offense. And, um, you know, with Bobby as well, uh, they probably got more reps than they were ever used to in a, in a practice uh, because usually half those reps are going to Giannis and the other half are going to Dame and then Chris and then Bobby. Today it was all Chris and all Bobby. Uh, they, they'll sleep well uh, tonight. I can say that uh, from that, but it's probably good for them as well. You used the words, I think, camp and we're going to work hard. Yeah. Last week. I thought we got some stuff done today. Um, you know, it, it's again, just you got to roll with the punches. Like, um, you know, we didn't know. We, we kept going back and forth from Dane. We actually yesterday thought he was going to go. And then as we walked on the floor <laughs> is when they said, no, that was late. Yeah, uh, so you've done all your, your practice planning, and then you get thrown the curveball. And you just got to adjust to it. And uh, I showed that today. Like, we just went right through it. Um, you know, obviously it's not the perfect way to practice going into a playoff game. Let me just be honest there, but it is what it is. Is that where you really stand out then as a coach? Are you like playing chess and imagining things or pretending to stand in for people? Or just, yeah. I know you have to roll with it and I know yeah. what you're doing, but this sounds like a crazy practice for preparing for the playoffs. You know, like yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's not like the perfect way, right? Um, but we're going to make no excuses. We're going to be ready. and. Uh, like all the things that they could do, you, you tried to show the team that, but it's still different. Like, you know, having Pat Beverly or Malik or Pat Connaughton be Dame, uh, no matter how many times you tell the, the defense to play that like Dame, they're not going to do that. They're just not, uh, you know, and that's just the reality of it. Um, so we actually, at the end, we took all that part out. We just played like we're, the offense was Chris's offense today and Bobby's. And we played that way today. So, you, know, you, like, you make an adjustment. And, you know, we play every defensive coverage that Chris may be able to see. And we did it over and over again. Every defensive coverage that Bobby may see. And so that wasn't the game plan today. 
But that's what we did today, and I think for those two guys, that will help them. The last few weeks we were asking if, those, if the big three, if they haven't been able to play together under you very often, yeah. they might even be, be for the playoffs. I guess the inverse, you all been playing without at least one of these guys for yeah. some time. Yeah. Has that helped in many respects? Yeah, I'm sure it helped. I'm sure um, – yeah, I'm sure there's going to be something that we do because we saw those guys out and have played with some of those guys out uh, will help us. Um, you know, honestly, you never, even during a regular season, you wasn't that concerned about it because you knew you would have them. Uh, and now you want to make sure you're ready just in case you don't. So. Uh, Doc, you, you weren't near Siakam, wasn't with the Pacers. Yeah. And all the matches were you know, way back in the game. How yeah. You still take a lot. I mean, there, there's certain things that we did offensively that we can do better. Uh, I thought our, uh, we have to have great shot discipline against them. Uh, that doesn't mean we don't want to run. We do. We want to get uh, every easy basket we get. Uh, but when you watch the games, you know, some of the early contested twos that led to fast breaks for them, you got to take away. Uh, we turn the ball over against them. Um, no matter who's on the floor, you can't turn the ball over against them. Uh, they were way more effective against us than any other team uh, as far as offensive rebounding. You know, they offensive rebounded against us. Uh, that can't happen. And they foul a lot, uh, but they didn't foul a lot against us. So, I mean, there's things that, that we have to improve on, whether who plays for them. We have to do a better job of taking advantage of things. Just to follow up to that, what does Seattle bring to that? Another post player. Um, another ISO, they, they don't ISO a lot, honestly, but with Siakam, they do a little bit more because that's what he's great at. Uh, they don't shoot as many threes as they did earlier in the year. Uh, they shoot less, but they're destroying people in the paint. Uh, they go up against every um, analytical number. They, they, they sense that that trade, I think they're fourth or third in an in in-between game, and they're effective at it. They're shooting over 50% in the in-between game. So they're not taking as many threes, but they're making all their twos. You mentioned some of the things about trying to slow them down, but what do you kind of see as the keys to slowing down? Uh, I think our discipline. Uh, you're not just going to, you know, I would love to whisper, I'll call Halliburton and say, hey, slow it down a little bit. Uh, but he's still going to run, you know, right? So we have to do things on ourselves. Like uh, we can't turn the ball over, all right? Um, our shots have to be the right shots. We have to work the positions that we get the shot. We want every single time. If that's the first five seconds, take it. If that's the last five seconds, get to it instead of rushing it. And then the biggest thing that I saw in our games, our discipline on offensive rebounds, uh, and we, we show guys today, and we, you know, we, I made it a joke, but you know, Pat Connor didn't run from the three-point line out at the top to get an offensive rebound, and you just saw them going that way. That can't happen. So those are the things we have to do. We can do those things. Guarding Halliburton, usually you think of how you defend him scoring. Yeah. Do you have to do it with his playmaking? Yeah, he's an elite passer, yeah. you know. Um, he, yeah, it is. You, you, you have to get deflections. You have to get your hands on him and your hands on the ball. Uh, but he's tough. It's not like, um, can't use a name, but a scoring guard that you're just trying to take his right hand away. Uh, and then if you take that away, you take him out. Uh, Halliburton, in a lot of ways, would rather pass. He wants to make guys better. Um, he, it doesn't upset him if he has a game of five shots. He's cool with that as long as everybody's getting it. Uh, and so in your coverages, uh, if you give him room, he's going to pick you apart, and, and we have to understand that. Yeah. How can that be better executed? Well, if they put the right matchups on them, we have to use them more. You know, um, you know, Orlando went small on them, and, and we were trying to roll them to the post. We got to get them there, uh, and he's got to do it with more. And we got to be better. We worked on all that today. With all the injuries that you have, especially with Giannis and Juan maybe Dane, mm -hmm. what do we need to actually have home court here? It's huge. You know, you, you fight for it. Uh, you have it. Uh, we got to take advantage of it. Uh, we really do, uh, especially early with guys injured. Uh, these two games are vital for us, right? And uh, we may be healthy, but we may not be, but we'll be at home, and that, that gives us a little bit of comfort for sure. Usually coaches at this time of year are just obsessed with, you know, they sleep, it's film. Yeah. You talk about golf. Yeah. I wonder if that's a mental break or 
Yeah, that's that's all I do. I go hit balls. Um, so you're not thinking basketball, or is it a true break? No, it's never a true break. As a matter of fact, I hit balls yesterday, and I had my laptop uh, at the place I was hitting balls with, and I hit balls for 20 minutes, and I sat down and watched some more film. I hit balls for 20 minutes. It was phenomenal. Uh, it's a good break for you. It's all a half, you know, to get away, and, and you try to do that. Um, some guys go for a walk, you know. Um, that's exercise, and I'm anti that. So, so uh, I figured I'll go hit balls. They're, you know what they're about to do? They're probably going for a walk. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, I think we've gotten better. Uh, we, we, we play with more size now. We've been more physical. Um, you know, I don't know if they fear the deer or not, or not yet, but the, uh, the more we play, the better we play, the more we win, they will. Doc, when you got here, you said you were really looking forward to coaching this team. How much are you looking forward to coaching them in the playoffs? I can't wait. I love it. Uh, you know, I, you know, it's funny. I, I chose to be here, right? Like, uh, knowing that this is a very difficult situation to come into. And I, I didn't just walk to it. I ran to it. Couldn't wait to do it. Uh, I still feel that way. I really do. Um, I am a lucky human being. I have a job that I can't sleep because uh, I'm so excited to get up and go to work. Like, how many people can say that, really? And uh, this, this group has not, um, like, they've been so good to coach. You know, we haven't played well. We haven't done a lot of stuff. But they're wonderful people, um, and that gives you joy as a coach. Speaking of that, it seems like you've been working on Malik a lot. Um, yes. Kind of like it's a personal thing, like, hey, come on, you're okay, or whatever. Yeah. Um, is there a connection there? Like, you can see he's probably frustrated. And yeah. Know, you don't want him to get too down. Sometimes you can just leave a guy alone and let him work through it alone. Yeah. Your approach has been almost nurturing. Or yeah, I just um, – you know, he's never been in a situation like this. You know, last year he didn't play a lot with the Lakers. Um, we're going to need him. I, I want him to feel good about himself. I want him to see his value. Um, and I want him to see his value more than just made shots. I think when you put the pressure on you that if I don't make shots, I can't help the team, that's a lot of pressure. You know, I want him to see on the nights because he's a human. And he's going to have nights where he doesn't make shots. I want him to know, and I tell him that every day how valuable he is. Uh, you know, if you ask every single player, if you took away what they do well, what else they can do to help the team? If they say nothing, that's not a good answer, right? And so we're trying to show him. I'm trying to show him that there is something when he doesn't make shots that he can do uh, on the defensive end, on moving the ball, being a decoy. Um, and, you know, that's hard for a guy to see that. So we're trying to teach that. I got that feeling, yeah. And he didn't play last year, and that's more pressure on him. He wants to play, you know. Um, and I get it.